Hey, what's going on there, folks? Earthmaster here, checking in. Early morning. Yeah, not too early. It's about 9 a.m. Wednesday morning, May 6, 2020. Here in Northern California, doing an early update video uh, regarding the earthquake activity picking up worldwide out here. We're at least in some very interesting spots. Uh, latest earthquake up here above New Hampshire, a 3.1 earthquake coming into the border of the Canada region there. Uh, nothing major, but it is a very interesting event. They're following um, some earthquake swarming and earthquake activity in Southern California. Uh, they had a 3.9 in the uh, Salton Sea region. I'm going to get to that here in a closer map in just a minute. Uh, that was followed up by a 2.7. There's also been quite a bit of uh, smaller earthquake activity occurring in that region. Uh, as well and once again I'll show you that map here in just a second uh, largest quake on the map the 6.8 largest quake to hit the globe in the last 30 days of earthquake activity go ahead and show you that real quick uh, we can bring back um, many many days here and you can take a look we had you know, a couple of sixes over the last 30 days but this here the 6.8 that struck out here in the <coughs> Indonesia region uh, near was Samlaki, Samlaki, Indonesia. Maybe I pronounced that right. Anyway, historical seismic activity out here is um, enormous. So this 6.8 is not uh, any type of surprise or any type of uh, um, shock to the region. It looks like quite a few folks did feel this earthquake, but once again, this is the largest earthquake to strike um, the globe. The globe here within the last 30 days. I went ahead and added a 30-day time frame onto the um, Earthquake 3D globe, but it's not going to show 30, earth, uh, 30 days worth of earthquakes. I'm going to keep it roughly at about um, 24 hours or so, or right around there. Uh, but once again, uh, 3.1, the latest quake here on the map above the border up into Canada. Uh, area of interest is down there in Southern California. If uh, been a viewer for a while or just an earthquake studier in general um, you would know about the swarming or swarms that they have down there in the salt salt and sea region um, it happens it seems like every oh every four years or so is what it seems like they had one back in 2012, one in 2016, and here it is, 2020, right? Roughly four years later, uh, we're seeing an, another, potentially, start of a swarm. Um, they did have a 3.9 that struck down there. Oh, actually, they got, okay, they still have it, a 4.0 here. A 4.0, that's the uh, blue circle there, and the, uh, you can see off to the left on the map here, uh, the 4.0 magnitude quake there kind of strange uh, I got one map shown a 3.9 and one a 4.0 okay so we'll go with this one 4.0 uh, down there and then that was followed up by many many ones and twos uh, prior to that 4.0 uh, you can see there's some earthquake activity as well well below 2.5 uh, which is that uh, minimal amount met uh, to show up on the globe it's just I don't want to I don't want to include these super small earthquakes on the globe so that's why we don't see them but that doesn't mean they're not happening. Uh, on this map, at least, over the last day, there's 25 earthquakes within this region. Uh, now, historically, in the past, this area, like I mentioned, has seen some pretty good swarms out there uh, in this area. Uh, in fact, the one out in yeah, 2016, I believe it was, if you guys remember, I think I did an earthquake video update on it way back then. Uh, in regards to a swarm that was occurring in the Salton Lake Sea region, which is this area right here, on this specific fault zone, the Brawley Seismic Zone. Now, this activity is occurring within that region there. It's about a mile or so just to the east of the Brawley Seismic Zone. That's this little red line that you guys can see right here. I'm trying to get it to highlight. Uh, sometimes it wants to give me a... There we go. Now, this is kind of like a... An extension if you will um, but not completely right it's kind of like an extension of the southern part of the San Andreas fault system even though it's a different name 
right? We got the southern part of San Andreas Fault up here to the north, this darker red line indicating that plate boundary uh, between the North American and the Pacific Plate. Uh, now this is an area where we've seen um, some some high interest here between the uh, the professionals, you know, the folks there that got the degree on the wall, uh, the seismologists and everyone, they uh, believe this area right here is going to be the area that ruptures uh, and that will produce the big one. Um, 2016, they had that earthquake swarm. Very, well, much stronger than this one here. But we're still kind of like in the early stages of what we're seeing today. Uh, anyway, it issued, they, the Office of Emergency Services, issued a weird, kind of a weird prediction, I guess, if you will. Um, it was an earthquake advisory um, of a potential larger quake occurring in the Southern California region, specifically this section of the San Andreas Fault here, the southern section, uh, due to the earthquake swarming that was taking place back in 2016. Um, I do have a copy of that here real quick. Let me see if I can bring that up in this image. I have to get rid of a couple of things here. Hold on one second. And then let's make this a little bit better uh, to view here. Okay, so this was off of, uh, I just went back and, and, uh, and you can do it yourself if you want. You know, this isn't on a fake website, uh, although sometimes people think CBS, what, what, fake news, right? Either way, it was put out there on mainstream media and issued by uh, uh, the folks there in the OES office, Office of Emergency Services. Um, okay, I still can cut off a little bit there. Hold on. So this reads here, just real quick. This is from 2016 there. You can kind of see on the map there um, the swarming that was occurring there <clears throat> in the Salton Sea region near the Brawley seismic zone, right? On this map, if you notice, there's not really an extension that moves across that lake. Uh, they put that in a little bit later. As you can see here on my map, I can even zoom in a little bit closer here. Uh, maybe I can. Hold on a second. Where we can match that. But they don't include that specific fault. Well, they, they mention it, but they don't show it up here on the map. Here's my current map of the swarming right now. The USGS uh, one day all magnitudes of the Salton Sea region. And looking back... Um, four years ago you can see swarming was much further north but not a lot um, it's still basically within that area of the Salton Sea and on the Brawley seismic zone so Los Angeles a swarm of earthquakes that rattled the Salton Sea area earlier this week has increased the probability of a major quake hitting Southern California according to the CBS uh, Los Angeles news reports uh, the California of emergency services Office of Emergency Services, that is, OES, issued an earthquake advisory warning residents and officials in Ventura, San Diego, San Bernardino, Riverside, Orange, Los Angeles, Kern, and Imperial Counties that there was a greater possibility of a major earthquake through October 4th. Anyway, um, there was about, oh man, I'm trying to think, about 140 earthquakes or so, uh, swarming, if you will, that kind of triggered that activity and this was put out by notable folks there you know dr lucy jones right she's that lady that gets on the uh the news whenever there's a major earthquake and explains everything very nice person um but anyway nothing happened i, I guess it was just like a it's weird right because they don't like to predict earthquakes you really can't and even in this case it proves that you cannot predict earthquakes but you can put out um if you will uh, advisories because anytime we see any type of swarming out there in an area that's already built up of pressure that's kind of like do we just sit around and and you know lollygag is that still a word <laughs> you know just kick rocks all over you know and just oh whatever happens happens or do we kind of put out like a little notification hey you know what we're getting some seismic activity just in case we should probably put out just an advisor hey folks there's a potential we might see something not that there is going to be not that there, there definitely wasn't 
because that time had passed and the swarming back there in 2016 had quieted down. But once again, it's on the Brawley Fault System, Brawley Seismic Zone. And it's an area, folks, of, of uh, pressure, I guess, if you will, between the, between the, uh, the plates out there. I'm going to read a little article here. The Brawley Seismic Zone, also known as the Brawley Fault Zone. Uh, it's an extensional tectonic zone that connects the southern terminus of the San Andreas Fault with the Imperial Fault, right? So it's kind of like a little extension. It does play a major part in this this area. Um, let's see here. The Brawley Seismic Zone represents the northernmost extension of the spreading center axis associated with the East Pacific Rise. Okay, it's going into some major big stuff here. Uh, I don't think we need to do that. Um, so here's a swarm that happened in 2012 near Brawley. Uh, well, a swarm of more than 300 small to moderate earthquakes occurred. Uh, with the two largest two reaching a maximum 5.3 and a 5.5 um, earthquake swarms are not unusual for this area like i mentioned we've seen them seems like they come in four years or so uh, there's also a swarm back in 1981 one magnitude reached up to 5.8 uh, according to the folks here the swarm activity is not completely understood but the new restlessness could generate uh, data that Will help scientists to gain a better understanding of the region uh, so anyway this area right here is not known to to produce one big earthquake you know and a couple of smaller ones it's basically known for creating um a bunch of little to moderate ones all at once or in swarming fashion that's what i was trying to trying to point out there so uh yeah and it's oh man i tell you what folks just seeing this activity down here just kind of scares me a tad bit because uh i can get back to this other map here like i say it's right there just to the south of the san andreas fault system that section right there that's been locked and loaded for quite some time and uh I'm hoping this goes away, but we'll have to see what uh, see what becomes of it. Looking further up north here, not a whole lot of activity specifically on the San Andreas Fault System. And of course, that's always bad news there because that's further building of pressure, if you will, on that region. We can shoot over here to the northwest. We're seeing a little bit of swarming activity down there in Southern California. Uh, to the northwest of this region in between what what section is it san san Janito. there's that word again uh fault zone and the anza section i believe that's been swarming for quite some time uh nothing major but this still plays a, a, a part out there in the spider web network of fault systems um, but this one down there in salt and sea kind of has me a little bit on the worried side there especially with no activity up here on the portion of the San Andreas Fault <clears throat> until you get into the creeping. I was gonna say until you get into the creeper section. The creeping section, I guess you could call it creeper. Um, up here well to the north near the uh, Mount Diablo, or not Mount Diablo, Diablo but the Diablo Range. Uh, you can see some smaller quakes popping off here, but like I say, this is a creeper creeping section, uh, which is known to produce some smaller earthquakes up here. And this is not, I get, you know, I guess it could produce some larger earthquakes up here to the north, but uh, typically we don't uh, see a whole bunch of buildup in that region like it is down towards the south. Um, Ridgecrest area still showing a little bit of earthquake activity today. Um, nothing major, just some small ones, and uh, I don't even think we've seen any twos in there, did we? Um... Looks like Barstow had a, a little two-pointer down there, but uh, relatively below average aftershock activity in the Ridgecrest area. But uh, this one down here, folks, we're just keeping an eye on that. I'm going to be watching this station or this uh, area down here quite actively. If you notice down here into the Imperial Fault Zone, uh, there's a little bit of earthquake activity now showing up. That's a, uh, what do we got there? A little small quake. 
Well, 2.2. That one occurred, it looks like, be before the 3.9, 4.0 earthquake uh, this morning. I could have swore that was a 4.0 when I started that video. Now it's back down to a 3.9. Interesting. Interesting there, let me tell you. Anyway, folks, once again, moving in to that region there. This warming activity is south of that 2016 activity. But we've seen swarming activity here in the same exact spot here uh, um, in, in the past. And I just can't remember exactly what year it is. So not unheard of, but activity like this is kind of what, you know, pushed out that earthquake advisory from the OES back in 2016. So they must know something. They know this area right here is a built up area of um, extreme stress. And the southern section of the Sandras Fault is what the folks are saying uh, the big one will take place on. So we definitely need to be on alert and awake. You know, kind of just pay attention to what's going on out here. I will provide any. I will provide more updates um, if I see this thing increasing. I probably will search for a data station much closer to that region, so we can see uh, any earthquakes that uh, may not be may not be reported by the folks there at the USGS uh, because it's always good to watch, always good to see um, and know of earthquakes that are occurring on the seismic data stations. Right now they're pretty quiet. But uh, I was just looking at this latest quake here, 3.9, well north into Alaska there. Kind of looks like that's in the area where that major quake struck uh, I think it was last year, or possibly the year before, the largest one that struck up here in northern Alaska. Uh, that's a pretty good sized quake there, a little aftershock. Let's see what the earthquake activity looked like in the past. Looks like there was a, yeah, some, yeah, a little bit of earthquake activity. Just going back the last 30 days there. But uh, anyway, folks, we're keeping an eye on things. Um, that's just way too many there. I'm going to have to adjust this accordingly. Make sure I don't include too much earthquakes on the map here. Just, just kind of experimenting with the 30-day feature here, folks. Um, normally, I run uh, the feed source from the USGS at the last... Uh, what is it, one day magnitude? Or one day all magnitudes, I believe, here. But I'm um, just gonna switch it over here. But still, I kinda wanna keep it within the 24 hour window of earthquake activity here so we don't uh, overload the globe with unnecessary cluttering. So yeah, um. Anyway, I'm going to jump off here, folks. I just did want to, I wanted to do a quick update video on this. Uh, you know, it just kind of scares me every time I see some swarming down there. Even though it's typical, according to the folks, you know, or, or activity that's, you know, happens a, a lot, according to them. I see it like every four years down there in Southern Cal, so. Um, yeah, let me, let me jump off here and see if I can find that... Uh, data station here so we'll chat you guys in a little bit